my little baby was brutalized by this person, by this evil coward. A mother's pain, now a mission. It is wrong to kill an innocent young woman. A quest for justice. Kathy Vitrano arriving in court today to testify for the first time in the case of her murdered daughter, 30-year-old Karina Vitrano. The mystery murder of a jogger killed in New York City. Vitrano was killed in August of 2016 after heading out for a late afternoon jog near her home in Queens. It was so ordinary. A woman out for a jog in a place that she knew, in a neighborhood that she knew. That's everybody's worst fear. Right now, there's evidence of, of strangulation, asphyxiation. Janelle, why'd you do it? Why'd you kill her? But her family has yet to find justice for Karina after her accused killer's first trial ended in a hung jury. Justice will be served. A devastating blow to her heartbroken family. Now her parents are hoping for a second chance. But the question remains, this second time around, can the prosecution convince a jury to convict? This is not an easy case for the prosecution. Cases generally don't get better with time. Memories fade, and the fact that this was a mistrial to begin with certainly should give the prosecution some pause. I am 100% confident that this is the person who murdered Karina Vitrano. 100%. There is no doubt in my mind. Tonight, we take you inside the evidence at the center of one accused man's fate. The confession, the defense says, was coerced, and questions about that DNA evidence. Multi channels blood, or body fluid, shoe prints, or hair at the crime scene. The Vitrano family now aching for closure. It began as a normal summer day for the Vitrano family. Karina, who was working as a speech pathologist in New York City, known locally for her large social media following. She lit up the room when she walked in. A fitness buff. She planned a late Tuesday afternoon run. But her father, her usual running partner, was unable to go with her because of an injury. Don't worry, Daddy. I'll be OK, she tells him. That would be the last time he'd ever speak to his daughter. It wasn't uncommon for Karina Vetrano to go for a jog. She would usually go with her dad. But this particular time, he did not go. And when she didn't come home, that's when the parents' suspicions began to deepen. Former NYPD Police Chief Robert Boyce led the investigation into Karina's murder. We were looking for her phone. Her phone was pinging. It was on. When they found the phone, the officers started backtracking for the search. This surveillance video is the last known footage of Karina Vitrano alive. We got a lot of video. We were able to track her exactly where she went that day, how she ran into the park, which she did often. Police launch an all-out investigation. Her parents, Kathy and Phil, front and center. We need to find this predator. Just four hours after she left her home, Karina's father found her body face down in a marsh. 15 feet away from the trail where she was running. The people who were there described the sound that Phil Vetrano made as something between a scream and a bellow. And as the officers came running, they had to tear him away from his daughter's body as he fought with them to hold on to her. Law enforcement digs into hundreds of leads and tests more than 600 DNA samples, but they all lead to dead ends. Police really didn't have significant leads. They saw evidence of a struggle, and they knew that Karina Vetrano may have fought off or tried to fight off her attacker, but no suspect initially developed with any immediacy. But nearly six months later, an unexpected break when Lieutenant John Russo recalls seeing a man near the crime scene months before the attack. One of my lieutenants remembered stopping someone over there in Howard Beach who was looking, doing something suspicious activity. The suspect, then 20-year-old Channel Lewis of East New York. Lewis had attended a school for students with special needs. For some reason, a police lieutenant's intuition drew him to Chanel Lewis. The, the, the cop remembered something about him, and that's ultimately what unraveled the case. Investigators decide to bring him in for questioning. In a nearly four-hour interrogation, Police and the DA get a confession from Lewis to Vitrano's murder. When she got next to you as you as she was running and you were walking, what happened then? And then, you know, because of a past situation, I got angry and then I hit in there and stuff like that. 
Police say they've also matched Lewis's DNA to those on Vetrano's body, including from under her fingernails. Yesterday evening, Chanel Lewis, a 20-year-old male who resides in East New York, Brooklyn, was taken into custody. The case goes to trial in November of 2018. Lewis's family is adamant about his innocence. The cops are setting him up. The cops need to go do their job and find the real killer and take my brother out of jail. But despite what prosecutors say is solid evidence, the first trial ends in a hung jury. Prosecutors thought this case was over and done with. They believed they had a solid confession. They believed they had DNA evidence. What they didn't have, though, was the jury. After only a day and a half of jury deliberation, five jurors choose not to convict Lewis. Now, nearly three years after their daughter's death, her parents are trying again in Lewis's second trial for the first degree murder of Vitrano. Lewis's defense argues that that taped confession was coerced. The confession was only made after he was denied a phone call to his family, after the defendant was in a windowless room for several hours. And that the DNA evidence could have been contaminated. The very evidence that the government thinks proves their case actually creates a host of reasonable doubts. While the prosecution leans on forensic evidence to paint the last few hours of Vitrano's life. He choked her until she couldn't resist anymore. Well, I think some of the DNA, you'll see some more testimony uh, about how the DNA was recovered to cover what this uh, defense counsel said. This time around, Vitrano's mother took the stand, trying desperately to get justice for her daughter's murder. They're trying to appeal not just to the minds of the jurors, but to the hearts of the jurors. And who better to do that than the victim's mother? She says the last time she saw her daughter, she was in a coffin at a funeral parlor. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.